This is going to be time walking Magister's Terrace as a protection warrior. So, uh, this will be just like normal Magister's Terrace, basically. But I'm using my Tauren warrior this time instead of my troll. And, uh, yeah, time walking gave me a uh, chance to do this uh, on heroic mode. So, yeah, uh, once again, time walking does a real good job at uh, bringing everybody's power levels in line with each other. So I was playing my max level monk uh, in the last one of these I showed. This warrior's true level was 90 at the time that this happened. Uh, so she was scaled down 20 levels, back to 70. Worked just fine. Alright, so here Holy Priest noises. Got three people from Suramar and someone else from my own server. Don't see a lot of that. I think I've learned since uh, last time I talked about this that this is because the server I chose apparently is a very alliance heavy server. Not a lot of people play Horde on it. And this is where all 11 of my active characters are right now. <laughs> or 13 of them I guess really. <laughs> right up until I can properly retire my, my troll warrior, which is very soon. All right, so yeah, Magister's Terrace. Um, right, so in t <laughs> right, uh, Tanku knows how to get out of bubbles. So those things do a, uh, they create a magic dampening field, which causes them to take less magic damage uh, when they're inside it, and also all party members to take less healing. So if I want to be healed, I don't want to be standing in the thing. If I want them to take damage, I don't want them standing in the thing. But if I don't want to take magic damage, then I would want to stay in it. It's complicated. Simplest thing is just to move everybody out of it and stay out. So yeah, time walking. Uh, it's a random collection of six dungeons. You don't get to choose which. I queued up with this character and just was going to take whatever I got. And it happened to be one that I still needed for my Burning Crusade set. Four tank runs, so this worked out nicely. The Architraz is another one I needed for that that was also in the set, but I didn't get as good of footage in that. Uh, didn't go too well, so I'm gonna have to redo it on normal. That's fine. But this one went quite well. That was a whole lot of fun. I was on my game, everything went great. Right, this room, kinda weird. There's a boss very close to the entrance, and also that archway that I'm looking at on my right closes off when the boss uh, is um, is encountered. And it's very common to see party members get locked out of the, the doorway there. Let's see if it happens here. I think I'm careful enough to prevent it and make sure everybody's in before engaging the boss. But let's see how it goes. That's why I'm choosing not to fight in that room, because if I did, somebody, possibly me, would get too close to sail in Fireheart and close the door, and someone else, probably the mage and the priest, maybe, would perhaps still be out in this hallway and get locked out. So this is more about controlling my own party members than the, uh, the things I'm fighting. Because with a coordinated group, with people who know exactly what to do, I wouldn't have to play this particular way. Heroic Throw, I'm finding, is much better at getting threat than taunt, because my understanding of taunt mechanics is that it forces the target to focus their attacks on me for, like, two seconds or something, and also sets my threat level to be the highest of any threat level of anyone targeting, but if I'm not generating any additional threat with attacks, uh, the healer will continue generating threat with healing spells. So, after I taunt something, if I don't actually land any attacks on it to build up more threats, it'll just go straight back to the healer and not do the line of sight pull like I was trying to do there. Uh, so I needed to do a heroic throw, which doesn't do much damage, but generates a lot of threats. Yeah, okay, waited for everybody to get in. Uh, and that is much better at sticking it to me, as it turns out. This guy likes to yell a lot. 
channels from Fell Crystal, destroy it. It's unclear to me what happens if you let him continue channeling. He keeps growing. Somebody disconnected. I think he'll be back. I found that no matter how quickly the crystal is destroyed, he's just as happy. I should come here and let him finish that sometime, just to see what it actually does, because I do not know. He's gonna do it again before the combat is over. Alright, he's chosen this crystal this time. He's getting bigger. It doesn't put a buff icon on him though, so I can't read about what it does. Just does something invisible. Oh, maybe it was filling his mana bar there, because he does have... Oh, that's probably what it does. Okay. Yeah, because I see that depleting. And once it's empty, he's probably going to go for another crystal. Okay. Yeah, so it just gives him power for his abilities, I'd imagine. Got it. All right. So yeah, I had time walked with a couple of other characters to uh, get to know the route through here. It's not complicated or anything, it's pretty linear. But still, I still like to know where the turns are. Like, for example, know that I need to turn right out of that room compared to how I came in. Just so I don't fumble around looking for a doorway. And also, this sneaky quest here, Tirith here, so easy to miss. If I'm not looking at my minimap and I don't see the question mark there. So many times I've just walked right past him. You have to turn in the quests there to chain on to further stuff coming up. Kinda heavy damage going on here. I used Last Stand and something else to survive. I survived. Standing in the middle of those can be a little bit dangerous if it's unmitigated. Because they all deal damage when they blow up and they die. I'm getting a lot of victory rushes. It's it's fine. Vexalis. Not a particularly complicated boss. But we do manage to have something go wrong here. So he discharges pure energy. I was figuring my thunderclap would pick those up, but it's not. It's not reaching them. And here we get to learn what happens if no one ever targets the pure energy. When I've killed a pure energy, it's given me a little buff to my damage. And, uh, maybe a bit larger and then take some damage over time. But it turns out if you don't kill them, they do this. <laughs> do a whole bunch of zaps to everybody around. I'm trying to, like, pick them up with heroic throw and stuff, but... They're not responding to my area of effect attacks. It seems like they have to be single targeted. And that's what happens if you ignore the pure energy completely, as it turns out. He's almost dead, so I'm hoping the remaining people can get it done. But no, it was only one remaining person, and they could not. So everybody runs back. All right, so I'm going to check on that pure energy in the adventure guide. Arcane damage to all players within 401 yards for something something. So giving a suggestion for how to do this better next time. Everybody's probably figured it out, but just in case. So I'm going to kill those myself. Yeah, so I got bigger. I got a thing. Deals arcane damage per second. Damage dealt increased by 20%, I think. So it's 10% additive per one of those you kill. So it's pretty cool. 
It's a good thing to have, mostly. Because the, the damage you actually take from doing that is not too significant. The damage bonus is... But yeah, the rest of the party members are paying attention and actually bothering to kill those. Everything is going great. There we go, nice and smooth. Okay, so quest stuff here. Uh, gotta initiate this cutscene, but don't have to watch it. If you sit there and watch, it's this long, slow camera pan that shows, I think it's Kill Jaden in the Sunwell up there. Is it the Sunwell? Something, something. Anyway, uh, some big demon bathing in some something or other. Uh, by activating that, I've given everybody quest credit for doing that step of the quest and activated like a script trigger for Calicos to show up on that platform. He's timed to show up right after the cinematic would end if you watch the whole thing, but uh, conveniently that takes about as long as it takes to kill these two. It'd be a lot more convenient if he actually just showed up right away, but um, I can spend the time that it takes for him to show up to kill these two sentinels, just to move the dungeon forward a bit. And since I and at least one other person still need some quests in here, I'm letting people know I'm routing back there. So that's why I'm turning around. So anybody else who has the quest can come on up and turn it in. Kill Jaden must be destroyed. Yeah, kill Jaden, that's the one. Is he a raid boss somewhere? Probably. I don't remember when or where you fight him though. Hmm. Alright, so all the out of the way quest business is done here. Now we have this room. This one's not too bad. It's reasonably straightforward if you do this pull this way. There are a lot of people in that room, though, who are going to cause problems. This imp doesn't move. I think even if it's silenced, it'll just sit there doing nothing at all. I'm wrong. Okay, so get out of its line of sight and it will come to me. I guess I'm thinking of something else. Trying to get that warlock out of the uh, arcane shield thing. I got Leap of Faith for some reason. <laughs> Not sure why the priest wanted me all the way back there. I need to get this Sunblade Magister to, uh, to behave himself. That she wanted me not to rush into that room, I guess. Yeah, a bunch of casters here. Uh, Paladin would excel at this. Death Knight would do pretty well, too. Warrior doesn't have any tools for ranged silence or interrupt. I can move to their location, but I don't have really a way to move them to my location. Am I remembering that like a few expansions ago there used to be a talent that made heroic throw silence for a time? That sure would be nice to have. I feel like that was a thing back in Cataclysm or so. Currently, as far as I know, it is not. Sister of Torment is the one of these that's really the pain, because she can mind control, I think? It's either mind control or like a channeled stun or something. Let's see if she does it. Deadly Embrace, that's the one. I interrupted it. It's one of those two, and it lasts like nine seconds or something. It's pretty long. Not something I want to let go off. The rest of them I don't worry about too much.
Okay, in this room. <laughs> Prepare for a bit of a mess. This room coming up here is always just super messy. What you're gonna see is probably pretty clean as this room goes. But that's not saying much. Because Priestess Delrissa is in here. She comes with like eight friends or something. It's a whole lot. It's probably not eight. You know, it's six or so. Uh, but it is a whole bunch of extra people who don't really respond to the threat table. So they're all going to just go and do whatever they want. Chase after other party members. And just generally cause a whole lot of chaos. I'm kind of unsure what the best way to deal with whole, this whole encounter is. I guess probably just like, focus on one at a time. Make sure they die. Don't worry too much about the chaos caused by all the others. Yeah, so a kill order. I didn't loot there. I could have looted. There were there were sparkles on the ground that I didn't take. Karaxis, Priestess Orissa, etc. I'm trying to pull in behind this pillar here. Yeah, look, it's a lot of people. Warlord Solaris. Many, many people. Yeah, so I'm doing stuff. I'm taunting, but they just don't care. They do whatever they want to do. So yeah, it seems like a tank basically doesn't have a job during this encounter, if I'm interpreting it right. Just healer has to heal everybody. Damage dealers just have to kill as quick as they can. And that's how the encounter gets done. It's fine. This went okay. Yeah, okay. This was actually pretty clean as that encounter goes. But I wasn't able to have too much to do with that. It was everybody else's behavior who matters there. I mean, it was everybody's behavior, but, you know, not specifically mine. Tank does not get control there. Is this just Kael'thas in this room? Yeah, Kael'thas and a few friends first. Nothing problematic about this group here. Kael'thas takes a little bit to become attackable. I have to walk into him and let him talk for a while. He has a big crystal shard sticking out of his chest. honestly believe I would trust the future to some blind half-night elf mongrel? That must be Illidan. <laughs> oh no, no, no. He was missing a stepping stone to a much larger plan. It has all led to this. And this time... Uh, I'm inspecting everybody to see their true level. 120, 110, 120... The priest was 120, right? Just was curious. Alright, so Kael'thas is kind of an interesting uh, encounter. After a little bit, he's going to summon a phoenix. Vengeance burns, that's your cue. Okay, so Phoenix is there, doing a Hellfire sort of thing. Can be killed, doesn't take too long. So the Phoenix is worth killing real quick. Looks like there's also another hurt zone there that's easily avoided. So getting rid of the Phoenix to stop this group-wide damage that's happening for a time. Then it goes into an egg, which is also worth targeting and breaking. If the Phoenix egg is not broken, the Phoenix comes back. So I break it right as he turns my world upside down. Causes these two big jumps, then I'm floating. I have free control as if I'm swimming. If I touch the ground, I'm going to be rocketed back upward. If I touch those arcane spheres, I'll take a bunch of damage. So the best thing I can do here is to fly down, stay just off the ground, and melee him from outside the arcane spheres. 
Just a little 3D space navigation challenge. Not too hard to pull off when I know what's going on. Casters could just stay up in the air and be fine. They'd get interrupted when they land like that, but other than that, they'd be totally fine. Doing another gravity lapse, but it's basically dead. Yeah, so that's what happens when I try to land. Alright. I had a cool run. Right, that's a uh, quest item you get automatically for the first time walking dungeon on a character. Turn it in for lots of time warp badges. Gems that are useless. I get an intellect gem or an agility gem. Both absolutely useless stats for a warrior. <laughs> Alright, anyway, that was a cool run on Magister's Terrace. I'll see you next time.